Alright, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of x plus 7. So, I actually have two methods to solve this problem. So make sure to stick around for the video to see me solve both methods. So for my first method, method 1, I'm going to write my problem right here. 2 to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of x plus 7. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 5 to the power of x plus 7, I can write that as 5 to the power of x times 5 to the power of 7. And now, from here, I'm going to divide both sides by 5 to the power of x. So then, these two cancel out, and I get 2 to the power of x over 5 to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of 7. Now, from here, an important property of the exponents is that if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n. This is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So 2 to the power of x over 5 to the power of x is equal to 2 over 5. And another property is that if I have something in the form a to the power of m over b to the power of m, this is equal to a over b to the power of m. So 2 over 5 to the power of x. And this is equal to 5 to the power of 7. Now from here, <clears throat> I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I get log 2 over 5 to the power of x is equal to log 5 to the power of 7. And if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so I get b times log a. In this case, I have log 2 over 5 to the power of x, so I can move x to the front, and I have log 5 to the power of 7, so I can move 7 to the front. So I get x times log 2 over 5 is equal to 7 times log 5. Now from here, we obviously want to find the value of x, so to do that, we have to get rid of log 2 over 5 by dividing both sides by log 2 over 5. So then these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to 7 times log 5 over log 2 over 5. And we have our answer here. This is our solution, but there is a way to simplify it more. So first off, if I have something in the form log a over b, this is equal to log a minus log b. So log 2 over 5, that's going to equal... log 2 minus log 5. And now from here, I get 7 times log 5 over log 2 minus log 7 times log 5 over log 5. And these two cancel out, so I get 7 times log 5 over log 2 minus 7. And this is the same thing as 7 of log base 2 of 5 minus 7. Now for method 2.
what I can do is my equation was 2 to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of x plus 7. And now I'm going to just start by taking log on both sides. So I get log 2 to the power of x is equal to log 5 to the power of x plus 7. And now using that property, I get x times log 2 is equal to x plus 7 times log 5. And now if I distribute the log 5, I get x times log 2 is equal to x times log 5 plus 7 times log 5. Now if I subtract x times log 5 on both sides, these two cancel out and I get x times log 2 minus x times log 5 is equal to 7 times log 5. Now I can factor out x, so I get x times log 2 minus log 5 is equal to 7 times log 5. And divide log 2 minus log 5 on both sides. So these two cancel out and I get x is equal to 7 times log 5 over log 2 minus log 5, <coughs> which again simplifies to this. So x equals 7 times log base 2 of 5 minus 7 is my answer. Alright, so in this system of equations, I have x squared minus y squared is equal to 28 and x times y equals 48. So I'm given two equations. Let's just say that this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. So what I want to do is find the value of x plus y. So what is the value of x plus y? And finding this is very simple when we find the value of x and the value of y. So to start what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my second equation here. So equation 2 is x times y equals 48. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for one variable in relation to the other. So it doesn't matter which one, but for this case, I'm going to solve for y. And to solve for y, I have to isolate it, meaning I have to get rid of this x by dividing both sides by x. So I get y is equal to 48 over x. Now using this equation, I can plug this back in to equation 1. So equation 1 is x squared minus y squared is equal to 28. Now here we got y is equal to 48 over x. So if I plug this in for y, I get x squared minus 48 over x squared is equal to 28. Now I can substitute the 2. So I get x squared minus 48 squared over x squared is equal to 28. Now, I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared. So now, for my left-hand side, I have to distribute the x squared. x squared times x squared is x squared squared, or x squared to the power of 2. Now, I have this minus 48 squared over x squared times x squared. These two x squared cancel out, so I just get 48 squared. And now this is equal to 28x squared. Now I'm going to subtract 28x squared on both sides. So I get x squared to the power of 2 minus 28x squared minus 48 squared is equal to 0. 
Now I'm going to set u equal to x squared. So I get u squared minus 28u minus 48 squared is equal to 0. And now I can solve this by completing the square. So I'm going to add 48 squared back. And now I get u squared minus 28u is equal to 48 squared. Now I'm going to add this, so negative 28, or we can say just positive 28. I'm going to add this divided by 2 squared on both sides. And if you, don't, if you guys don't know what completing the square is, you have to go watch a video on it. So I add this on both sides. I have 28 over 2 squared on both sides. And 28 over 2 is 14, so I get u squared minus 28u plus 14 squared, which is equal to 48 squared plus, again, 14 squared. And now the reason I did this, the reason I used completing the square, was because now I can factor this out. This turns into u minus 14 squared, which is equal to 48 squared. I'm going to rewrite as... 50 minus 2 squared, and 14 squared, I'm going to rewrite as 10 plus 4 squared. Now from here, u minus 14 squared is equal to 2,500 minus 200 plus 4 plus 100 plus 80 plus 16. And now if we add these up, we get u minus 14 squared is equal to 2,500. And if we take the square root on both sides, we get u minus 14 is equal to positive or negative 50. So we get two equations. Now we get u minus 14 is equal to positive 50, and u minus 14 is equal to negative 50. So u minus 14 is equal to positive 50. I get u is equal to 64. And u minus 14 is equal to negative 50. I get u is equal to negative 36. Now, remember how we let u equal x squared. So this means that x squared is equal to 64 and x squared is equal to negative 36. Well, we can't have a number squared equal to a negative number, so this is wrong, meaning that x squared equals 64 is my only proper equation, and if I take the square root on both sides, I get x is equal to positive or negative 8. So these are my two solutions to this problem. And I know that I said this wasn't work, but there actually is a way we can use this to find solutions. Not real solutions, but imaginary solutions. So to do that, what I'm going to do is x squared is equal to negative 36. If I take the square root on both sides, I get x is equal to square root of negative 36. And the square root of negative 36 is the same thing as the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1. Now the square root of negative 1 is the same thing as i, so I get x is equal to the square root of 36i. And the square root of 36 is the same thing as positive or negative 6. So I get x is equal to positive or negative 6i. So these are another two solutions. And these aren't real solutions, but these are imaginary solutions, which still count as solutions to this problem. So my four solutions are x equals 8, x equals negative 8, x is equal to 6i, and x is equal to negative 6i.